Welcome back to Robbie Minds. Now for our entertainment segment, we're joined by actor producer who needs no introduction, Shinwa Jai. You've seen him grace your screens in movies, TV series, and want to catch up with you. Sean, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So tell me, you've had the opportunity of playing different roles. I'm even looking yeah. at you with the woven hair. <laughs> uh, what, what has been happening with you, movie-wise, produ mm -hmm. producing to as yeah. well? Um, just fill us up. Oh, yeah. So, um, I mean, TV and film has just has been the thing. Um, I haven't been in theatre production in a while, so I'm looking forward to doing one at the end of this year. Um, also, I have a few... I have a few um, I have some work coming out. Currently, I also have a film showing in, <laughs> currently stream, streaming on a major streamer titled Lee Shabby. Um, and Lee Shabby, you yeah. looked so unrecognizable. <laughs> I had to look at the poster and say, is that you? Yeah. Um, and, and that just shows like your versatility as an actor. How, yeah. how have some of these roles stretched you? Not just physically mm. um, that you become unrecognizable, but yeah. also in terms of your craft as an actor. I mean, so, I mean, the craft of acting for me is, you know, becoming somebody else, you know, so with every, with every experience, with every character that, you, that I create, I try and get the person to have like a different, like some different about them, if it's a walk, some, some tick about the person, um, somehow that they talk, something that's different all the time. So, I mean, for each one, you don't really know what it is. Until you, like, for me, I, I have to find it. I have to find it outside of the script, outside of, you know, how the person looks and all. Um, I think it's an adventure to go into someone's new, someone's life every time. So, it, it, just, it just gets me excited. And sometimes, um, you don't even know how you've done it, but they come out different. Are there characters that you lean more to maybe comic characters or characters that um, mm. draw on your lover boy side or characters that are intense uh, where you have to go deep within. I, What's your favorite kind of character to play? I think I'm more of uh, I'm more of like an like intense you know intense character type person. I I really like to explore this whole human experience. You know, um, and try as much as possible to project real people. Mm. You get what I'm saying? To project real people that, you know, people can see in their everyday life. Not just like the whole fantasy of, oh, it's really, it's really bright and sparkly. Do you get what I mean? So, um, I really want to make films that, films that matter, characters that are, that become iconic at the end of the day, you know, um, play a few real people, do some biopics, stuff mm. like that. Yeah. And that leads me to my next question, which focuses on your role as a producer. Mm. Um, in terms of the kind of stories that you want to see come out of Nollywood, are you looking to see perhaps, like you said, more biopics or, um, Movies told in the local language, mm. movies that maybe portray historical figures or tell yeah. the realities of um, everyday people, maybe not even to maybe pop culture. Yeah. You know, um, as a producer, what's, what should we be expecting from Nollywood? Um, I mean, I definitely know that one of the things that I would love to do, I would love to be able to do to produce and, you know, star in is, you know, things that elevate the palette of what the mm. world is used to from Africa. Mm. Do you get what I'm saying? Um, I remember seeing the, the Silverton Siege. It's a South African film about, you know, it was, it was apartheid, but it, it was about rebels like taking charge of their own freedom in that time. And, you know, as, as a people, as Nigerians, we have such rich history you know, all the way back to, you know, like the pre-colonial pre times, the colonial times, and even like the 60s, the 70s, there's such richness, you know, that we can explore. Like if we just explore the, the drama of the military in Nigeria, for, mm. for instance, and do it on that elevated level. Think about the, 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 the production value of things like um, Independence Day mm. or, or A Few Good Men. I, I definitely can see that. Yes. And, and I know such productions require huge budgets. But yes, even within, um, I'll say, fairly yeah. um, big budgets, we're able to 
create content that resonates with everyday people. So mm -hmm. um, let's use Smart Money Woman season two, for example. <laughs> now, um, we, we talk about informing people about financial literacy. Now, yes. if, if you ask people to sign up for a financial literacy class, the chances are they'll say no. But if mm -hmm. you say, oh, come and watch this series where you present everyday life scenarios yes. before you know you're being entertained you're being informed but yeah. you're also being educated yes. so tell us about your experience working on this series um i mean my my first introduction to the material was the book i bought the book um i saw it was smart money woman and you know i had been following the author but i liked what she was talking about and then i read the book because i didn't think that it was information only meant for women mm. You know, so I read the book. I really loved it, and I met her at an event. And I said to her, "If you ever make a series, because that's what I that's what I feel I read. I read. If you ever make a series, I'd like to be in it." And flash forward, one of my favorite characters <laughs> is the one that I got to play. Yeah, um, it's it, working on working on the series has been amazing. Um, of course, there's been backlash because the character is one that you love to hate. <laughs> <laughs> so G is a character that that you love to hate. And, and why is that for those who are not familiar with Smart Money Woman? Okay, so Soji is a hmm, he's a hell of a husband. He's <laughs> <laughs> he's a man who lives off of his wife, and basically he he bullies her beyond the point of like her remembering who she really is you know and i think that a lot of women who go through this of, of course they love spouses on both sides who go through things like this i think you know for for what soji did to her this was financial abuse and there's no other way to put it and there are a lot of people it's so really relatable because there are a lot of people who are going through stuff like that and it's your hope that when they watch it, they know how to act. Yes, in exactly. In they know how to how to how to defend themselves. People who are about to get into such situations know how to defend themselves and get out. And then, of course, people who are going through it will be able to, you know, see themselves and mark map out a way to get out. So for those who are not uh, familiar with Smart Money uh, Woman, um, what should they expect from season one and what should they expect from season two? So some people just see it and be like, well, I don't even know what it's about. Yeah. You know, sell it to them. Okay. So I say I, I think that um, the Smart Money Woman is an instructional manual on just how to how to get out of the hole that is, you know, getting into a lot of debt, living a lifestyle that's, you know, above your means. Mm. It just helps you, you know, it relays a very relatable story that you can you can follow these these characters on their journey to freedom. Especially, I mean, the lead character, her name is Zuri. You follow her through to her play, the place where she goes from, you know, distress to, you know, financial stability and then on the road to financial freedom. For first for season one, she gets to a place of stability. Mm. And then for season two, it's really about building together. Mm. It's called it's more like the smart money tribe. It's mm. like, you know, um the 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 circle that you have, you build wealth with together and you know what's instructive is that you're a man mm -hmm. on the cast yeah. and you're speaking like this yeah. so it shows that even though the title is smart money woman mm. it's applicable to both oh, men absolutely. and to, absolutely. to women absolutely i mean there's, there's a scene there's a scene from season one where you know the lead character zuri is supposed to go out on a date and then her, her close friends go overboard with making her go shopping and go on a spending spree just to dress up for that date. And of course, she has bias, remorse. You know, one of the other friends who's on the other side of that financial be safe, you know, comes and lets her have it saying, you know what, you, you're being reckless once again. So all these things are... Are, they're very relatable. They're things that you recognize in your own life that, you know, sometimes your spending ha habits are affected by association. Yeah.
and, and like you said, where you they're trying to impress people in the days of Instagram, exactly. of, you know, posting, fake mm -hmm. it till you make it, <laughs> and nobody is addressing these things. But yeah. to see it play out in a series where you can relate and you can mm -hmm. see where the end is when you make these wrong decisions. Now, to you, um, yeah. beyond um, this project, what are other things we can expect from you, um, pr production-wise as well as um, as an actor? Okay, um, I mean, one of the things that, that gave me a lot of joy this year was that I went fully into the foray of doing a lot of teaching. Mm. Uh, yes, I've been teaching um, people to, to act, really, you know, act for screen. Uh, I recently, over the summer, I did a, a teen actors boot camp. It was mm. amazing. I want to be able to actually build capacity, you mm. know, for people within the industry. Um, you know, I've looked at this platform called Dear Rising Actor, which what we do is we empower actors financially, technically, and creatively by, by sharing knowledge, you know. So um, that that's, that's one thing. And then I'm producing a series for next year. Oh, well, yeah. well we wish you all the best Thank with you. that. Um, that's all we can take. Thank you so much, Shemajai, for Thanks being for our me. guest. And all the best with your production. Thank you so much.